This episode is sponsored by CruiseLine.com, where you can review cruise prices using easy-to-use cruise search and set up a price alert for your next dream cruise. Be sure to visit their site using the link in the description below. Hey cruisers, welcome to our tour of Caribbean Princess. We will show you most public areas of Caribbean Princess, starting from Deck 5 and working our way up. First up on the plaza deck is the island dining room. This is the first of three dining rooms on board. All are similar, but the art on the walls and the carpet variations can help you easily distinguish them. On our 10 night sailing to the Panama Canal, the island dining room was used for anytime dining between the hours of 5.15 p.m. and 9 o'clock p.m., as well as for breakfast, lunch, and wine tasting. Just outside the island dining room is the lobby bar, which is always a popular hangout, especially around dinner time. Just next door is the International Cafe. It's open 24 hours a day and offers a variety of food and espresso bar items which change throughout the day and evening. For example, in the morning there's pastries, coffee, and teas, while during the lunch and dinner hours you'll find hot soup, a wide range of complimentary salads, paninis, and quality dessert selections. The piazza is often a hub of activity and offers quick access to many notable areas on the ship, as you'll see. During the day, this central spot is bustling with activities for music and cooking demos. In the evenings, when the bars are busy and cruisers are heading to dinner, it's a great place to meet up with friends and catch live music performances, the balloon drop, or the captain's champagne waterfall on formal night. Adjacent to the International Cafe, you'll find the onboard art gallery, which on our sailing had hours that varied by day, along with an art raffle and a champagne art auction. Also on Deck 5, you'll find Vine's Wine Bar, where the friendly staff serves varieties of wine and snacks. Vine's Bar is one of my favorite spots on board. The decor is reminiscent of a wine cellar, and the special events like wine blending and wine tasting are worth watching for in your princess patter. From wine and chocolate tasting to tapas and wine flights, this is an inviting spot to spend part of your afternoon or evening. The Vines Shop, right next to the Vines Bar, offers a surprisingly good selection of products. It's definitely worth checking out if you're in the market for a gourmet gift or a little shopping. The Internet Cafe and Library is a light and bright place to catch up on emails, relax with a book or a game. Of course, you can always browse Princess's website for free if you're itching to research your next cruise on board. While the Internet Cafe is usually open 24 hours a day, the Digital Communications Manager works limited daytime hours, so be sure to check the Princess Patter if you need assistance. Moving up to Deck 6, the Palm Dining Room is located aft and is the second of three dining rooms on board. On our sailing, the Palm was used for two traditional dining seatings, the first at 5.45 p.m. and the second at 8 p.m. Windows on both sides of this venue keep it light and warm, and it's a lovely place to watch the sea as you dine. 
There are a wide variety of tables in all dining rooms, from large rounds for groups to intimate tables for two. The third dining venue on board, the Coral Dining Room, is also located on Deck 6. The decor and layout are quite similar across the three. On our sailing, Coral was used for a hybrid of early seating dining and anytime dining. The early seating was at 5.30 p.m. and anytime dining followed from 7.45 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Coral also hosted breakfast hours from 7.30 to 9.30 a.m., lunch from about noon to 1.30, and afternoon tea from 3 to 4 p.m. most days of the cruise. Here's a quick look at the club class dining option. Shops like Essence and Calypso Cove are on decks 6 and 7 for those needing to satisfy onboard shopping needs. The guest services on deck 6 is the spot to head for general hotel related questions. The staff is super friendly and delighted to help. Next on deck six is the shore excursions desk. It's laid out nicely with plenty of room to browse brochures and decide what activities might appeal to you. Just next to the shore excursions desk is the future cruise and princess captain circle offices. Next to those is one of our favorite spots on the ship, the crown grill. Crown Grill is the elegant onboard steakhouse and is quite large. It offers a combination of booth and table seating. The open kitchen provides a nice peek into the preparation process. That combined with the decor gives the venue an authentic steakhouse feel. On our sailing, Crown Grill also served as the venue for the complimentary traditional British pub lunch. Moving forward, you'll find the Churchill Lounge. It's kind of a cigar bar slash sports bar with rich wood decor and a pool table on the ceiling. This spot is often overlooked by passengers who may miss its tucked away location on their way to the Princess Theatre. The theatre is of course our next stop and sits the front of the ship on decks 6 and seven. It's always showtime here, from the Caribbean princess singers, dancers, and orchestra, to vocalists and magicians. By day, port and shopping talks are just a few of the events that can be found in this expansive spot. Heading all the way aft on deck 7, we'll find the second stage venue on board, the Western-themed Club Fusion. You'll enjoy morning Zumba, line dancing, trivia and bingo here by day, and music, comedy and dance parties in the evening hours. Also on Deck 7 Aft, you'll find the Photography and Video Gallery, where you can browse your photos, set up an appointment with a Platinum Studio, or pick up a GoPro or some extra SD cards. Meet the newly renovated Sabatini's Restaurant, where you'll find Italian cuisine for an upcharge. The restaurant has been entirely modernized, and with its open kitchen, this was a very popular spot on our cruise.
just outside Sabatini's and also on the promenade deck, you'll find the popular Wheelhouse Bar. Watch for live music in this venue. Explorer's Lounge plays host to a lot of activities on board. On our sailing, the Champagne Art Preview and Auction were held here, as well as seminars, game shows, discovery at sea, trivia, live music, and dancing. If you just want to grab a drink, enjoy live piano, and maybe catch up with cruise companions, Kerner's Bar is a great choice. For those looking for a game of chance with Lady Luck, the Grand Casino is unlikely to disappoint. There's a convenient bar and lots of opportunities to test your skill and luck. Now to the top decks for a look at the public areas and pools. The adults only terrace pool located on deck 14 aft offers perhaps the most dramatic views on the ship and is pretty much the only public space on the Riviera deck. The outrigger bar on deck 15 also shares a wake view and is usually one of the more quiet places to grab a drink on board. And now on to Steamers, the new family-style seafood restaurant occupying the aft end of the buffet restaurant. Steamers offers dinners served nightly by waitstaff for a nominal fee. On the other side, you'll find the casual barbecue restaurant, Planks, which offers a classic American-style dinner, also served by wait staff for a nominal fee. Continuing on, the newly refreshed World Fresh Marketplace is the onboard buffet with plenty of well-balanced options to choose from. The decor is fun, fresh, and definitely a welcome update. And don't miss the new drink station. If you're hanging out poolside, the Calypso Bar is super convenient. 
While we're talking about pools, here's a look at Calypso Reef's two hot tubs and its inviting pool. Coffee and Cones is the new poolside ice cream and coffee spot where you can grab soft serve, ice cream sandwiches, or espresso drinks and milkshakes. Neptune's Reef and Pool is a lot like the Calypso pool area. There are two hot tubs and a terrific pool. It does, however, offer quick access to drinks and snacks at three awesome new venues. First is the renovated Slice Pizzeria. For those looking to satisfy poolside pizza cravings, look no further. The Mix has your poolside drink needs covered. And the Salty Dog Grill covers non-pizza cravings like hot dogs, burgers, and the infamous Ernesto Burger, which you can learn about in our Caribbean Princess vlogs. Perhaps one of the most striking of the recent renovations on Caribbean Princess is with the Camp Discovery Youth Center concept. Let's first take a look at some of the outside kitty areas. And now we'll step inside the three to seven year olds treehouse. It's an inviting outdoor themed area the little ones should love. Next is the lodge for bigger kids, aged eight to 12. The team in the lodge leads fun activities like Wii Bowling, T-shirt coloring, Discovery at Sea, Trivia, Pizza Parties, and Animal Planet. The Beach House for teens aged 13 to 17 offers a chill beach lounge vibe. Moving forward on deck 16, we find the Trade Winds Bar. This is a terrific spot to catch views of both movies under the stars and the passing scenery. It was a popular spot on our cruise. Hearts and Minds, the onboard chapel, is a quaint area accentuated by natural light and a nice option for weddings or vow renewals. On the other side of Hearts and Minds is the Lotus Spa Salon and Fitness Center. Combined, they occupy the forward portion of the ship. The salon offers haircuts, styling, and even shaves for men. The fitness center is large and has some of the most dramatic views on board. There are the requisite free weights and of course no shortage of cardio equipment.
Nautilus machines, spin equipment, and a group exercise studio are located near the center area. Hopping up to deck 17, we find Morgan's Bar, Pirate's View Pool, and the Splash Pool, and a hot tub. Mini golf is also available here, but it's really more of a putting green. Now let's head over to the adults only sanctuary. Designed to be somewhat protected from the high deck winds, the sanctuary is one of Caribbean Princess's most beautiful areas. Located on Sports Deck 17, this pocket of tranquility has limited space available. At our sailing time, passes were $20 for a half day or $40 for a full day. Be sure to check into this amenity on day one for gorgeous views and unbeatable peace and quiet. Up on deck 18 is Skywalker's Nightclub. This top of the ship hotspot is ultra modern and offers panoramic views. In the evenings, stargazing here is a must and the colorful neon dance floor inspires cruisers to get up and move to the music. This is one of my favorite places on the ship and is a great spot for a pre-dinner drink. Our last stop on the tour is the sports court. If you're looking to shoot some hoops at sea, look no further. Thanks for joining us on this tour of Caribbean Princess. Be sure to check out our daily vlogs from this voyage to the Panama Canal in the description box below. Subscribe to our channel and follow Cruise Ships TV on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter to follow our cruise travels. Until next time, we'll see you on the high seas. Hey, click me to subscribe.